It's the Tommy Sandu podcast with GoDaddy. Nikhil Aurora is here. Nikhil, I'm I'm sure, I'm sure you are hungry after that chat. It's now lunch. Have you had lunch? No, no, I'm 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 very hungry, but I'm also very conscious of the, all the learnings I got from her path. I'm looking. I don't eat normally. I don't eat dessert, but now I'm thinking maybe I should start before the meal. Right. You're gonna find out in just a minute when we speak to Harpal Singh Sokhi why you should eat dessert, why you should not eat as much garlic as you think, and some real shockers around your breakfast, oats and milk. This is a, a great chat uh, with a superb chef who is also an entrepreneur, also a businessman, running restaurants, running TV shows. You know, he's got so much to him. If you've never seen Harpal Singh Soki before cooking, check out his YouTube channels, check out all the stuff he's made. Um, but I, I've got to tell you, this podcast comes with a warning. There is talk of Shole Pature. There is talk of Vada Pals. There is some, I was gulping all throughout it as my mouth filled with water and I was getting hungry and hungrier. So it's dangerous, uh, dangerous, but in a wonderful way. Uh, enjoy this. He's a brilliant man. He's got a real passion for food uh, and we love our food as well. Uh, and I think we've got some business kind of sense out of him as well when we see all the things he's up to as well. So great to have you with us, Nikhil, and great to have this man. It is Harpal Singh Soki on the Tommy Sandu podcast. Harpal Singh Soki, welcome to the Tommy Sandu podcast. Uh, how are you? Where are you? I'm good, Tommy. I'm good. I'm very good. Where Where in the world are you right now? So I'm based uh, out of Mumbai in India, and that's where we operate our whole business from. And that's uh, that's where I spend maximum time as a chef also. Mac, look at that. That looks like a. That sounded like a choice. This is where I spend the maximum time. What? How, how does How does Mumbai rate as a as a as a foodie place? Because I love the food there, but then I'm I'm a Valetti. So when I go and eat food in India, everything yeah. tastes amazing to me. So you're in like, you know, you've got your choices of flavors and cities and all parts of India, which do and serve up uh, food in, in incredible ways. And but what what's so great about Mumbai as a food place? So first, I, I would say that, you know, Mumbai being the finance capital uh, probably attracts uh, people from all over the world and uh, people from all over the country also keep coming to Mumbai because uh, they, they look for, uh, uh, you know, creating uh, uh, businesses out of them or finding a job or, or finding something that Mumbai has to offer. And it's a saying that Mumbai has to, uh, Mumbai can give back anything to a person who's willing to work hard day in, day out. And that's what Mumbai is all about. So having said this, uh, there's an influx of people from India uh, that come into Mumbai. With them, they bring in their expertise. Some of them, you know, who've been struggling, think of uh, adding up flavors uh, uh, into the food from wherever they are coming in. So uh, then it blends with what uh, blends with what Mumbai has to offer. So it's a multicultural uh, uh, city, I would say, in in uh, uh, India. And at the same time, it's very vibrant does not sleep at all i'm telling you and that's what i've seen uh, is the best thing about mumbai because when i go back to my hometown which is near calcutta uh, it actually goes back to sleep somewhere around 7 30 8 o'clock but uh, uh, i think that's the time when a new set of people wake up in mumbai to explore business to explore what mumbai has to offer and and there are there are a set of people also actually when you go back home sometimes while I was a chef in a hotel, so when I used to go back home at about two o'clock in the morning, there was another set of people who were ready for their kind of businesses. And I tell you, it's all very interesting. So that's what Mumbai has to offer. It's absolutely vibrant. It does not sleep. And it keeps you on your toes. You know? and, 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 and having traveled uh, worldwide, I believe uh, the best. Oh, we've just lost you for a second. We just lost you. Hold on one second. There is a show, actually. There's a show at the moment, uh, which is Midnight Asia on Netflix. And yes. It, um, have you seen it? It, it looks at all yes, the kind of... I, yes, I've and, seen that. Right. And all the crazy places around Asia that wake up at midnight. And a lot yeah. of them is, is food related. And they look at like these amazing king prawns being made in Bangkok or somewhere. And, and, and one of the cities is Mumbai that they cover because... That's what they say. Mumbai is just is incredible, and there is it kind of works in shifts. The night creatures come out. Uh, you know all about those night creatures in Mumbai, surely, Nikhil. Yes, I'm sure Nikhil. Yeah, will know that. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Mumbai, you know, I've been at you know, obviously been coming to Mumbai for the last 
whatever decade or so, uh, including you know running the marathons and all. But uh, you know, as her pal was saying, I think that it is true that there are segments of people who start day at different times. Uh, but the food, you know, I think uh, her pal, you're talking about different you know, varieties of food and everything. But, but you know, I mean, what, what I find it really interesting is that, uh, uh, that, you know, you normally you think North is like Delhi, for example, is always, you know, big on Punjabi food and everything. But actually in Mumbai, uh, you know, the variety and the depth of food is so, so like almost covers the entire country, right? I mean, you, you, you obviously operate out of that, but just, just share something about that because Delhi is always hardcore Punjabi, but you get to Mumbai, but it's Punjabi and other, other, other things, you know? Well, well uh, I think, uh, I mean, uh, I, I'll come there. Uh, I mean, when you think of Delhi, uh, you cannot run away from butter chicken, dal makhni and uh, paneer butter masala. So these are standards, okay? If you're in a lounge bar, you are sure that only three things work, although your menu would be very extensive. Delhi has standards. It offers uh, chole bature uh, in the street side. That's one thing. Same way, when you when you are in Mumbai now, especially the scenario now in Mumbai is, you will run across a lot of these tea stalls that are run by the Bhatt community. Okay, Bhatt community comes from uh, the border lines of Rajasthan and Gujarat. They are particularly a sect of people who know to run best tea stalls. And I tell you, they definitely add some drug to the tea, which is why you get... <laughs> Which is why you get addicted to it. I'm, I'm. You cannot miss out. I mean, the best guy would say, "Nay, let's go and have chai at the Nukkad or the Bhat or the Bhat guy." And there's tea so standardized. I mean, there's there's a perfect standard recipe they have. It does not fail. I mean, you go to any place, it remains the same. So that's a set of people who get, who do the tea, which I feel is missing in Delhi. I don't see that too much on the streets of Delhi. This is something which is excellent in Mumbai. Okay, Mumbai has a, a great uh, vada pav that uh, comes from the community of mill workers. Uh, that is actually, I would say, the lifesaver of all bachelors, all Bollywood strugglers. And whoever lands first in Mumbai, it comes as just five rupees, two vada pavs and two bananas. That was my kind of a meal when I had also... I mean, come for the first time. And any struggler who comes, this is his meal. So two bananas, two vada pavs, you're sorted for the day. You get the spice, you get the dessert, you get the vitamin B12, whatever you want. It's all fixed up there uh, in the vada pav and the banana. So that's that's something which comes at the very basic level. Then there's a sect of community which came from, you know, uh, Mangalore. They were the first kind of people who actually brought South Indian food and they also bought what was a see-through kitchen in Mumbai, a select set of seti, shetis by the clan we all know. So they bought in their South Indian version of uh, food from Mangalore, which is why mostly when you uh, consume uh, sambar in Mumbai, it's always sweet, although I don't like it. I like the Andhra style of sambar, which is like a real sambar, which is like a spiced up sambar. I love that. But the shetty clan bought hygiene, bought South Indian food. Then there were a sect of people who came and settled directly from, uh, uh, you know, those partition days. And they had come straight to Mumbai and they were the Punjabis. And I tell you, uh, Punjabis, the moment they land in any country, the first thing they think is that, okay, let's cook food for the people. So Mm -hmm. (laughs) that's what these guys did. And they created some legacy restaurants in Mumbai. And Of course, if I were to compare the food in Mumbai, Punjabi food in Mumbai versus Punjabi food in Delhi, yes, it's way different. Uh, It's now mellowed down to some extent, but there are certain pockets. Like, for example, if you go to Chembur, if you go to Sayan Koliwada, you will still get the real Punjabi food. So when you walk across in Mumbai streets, there are sects of people. It starts getting divided. Okay, so the moment you get into Mahim, you will get great kebabs from... Uh, the Muslim community is settled there. They have great khamiri roti, soups, you know, paya shorbas. If you get into uh, the Bandra uh, west side, there are there is a sect of East Indian community people. So you have to get into those small lanes to find a great Anglo-Indian restaurant who would do uh, food with the East Indian masalas. So it, it's really interesting to uh, see that how everything changes. So for example, where I live, I, I live around in Kandivili. 
so there is a sect of gujarati community who dominates the entire thing so you will find everything in terms of snacks and they love amul cheese to the core i mean if they were to swear on something probably they will not swear on their mother father they will swear on the amul cheese and they sleep uh, with a pack of amul cheese uh, besides them so everything has amul cheese on top of them it's such a beautiful thing so everything that is snacking everything that is sweet spicy flavors you get around in kandivali balad and borivali area same way on the central line ghatkopar side you will get that so in dadar you will get everything that is maharashtrian you will get spicy food you'd get curries uh, of maharashtrian flavor so it's well divided the fabric is well divided the moment you get into uh, from one uh, i would say suburb to the other suburb uh, the flavor changes uh, the flavor palette changes because that's how people settled okay people preferred settling in a neighborhood uh, only where there were people from their same community unlike probably i would say uh, the new age people who decide on okay let's settle where things are better so those places have become uh, you know multi i would say uh, cultural and there the offering is probably everything you get a bihari litti choka you get a mangalorean curry you get a a dosa idli sambar you get a north indian butter chicken paneer butter masala you name it and uh, that that's the beauty of mumbai you know it with every suburb i have seen uh, the food palace changes uh, food palette changes and each suburb has its own speciality dadar has its maharashtrian speciality kandivali has its uh, gujarati speciality sain koliwada has punjabi speciality bandra has uh, punjabi speciality so that's how it keeps changing yeah see that's that that's amazing and oh, i've got so much to ask you now all of you've opened up so much conversation there firstly aren't we lucky how lucky are we to be let's just call it desi whether you are uh, bangladeshi pakistani indian you know if you are from the south asian countries yes. we got the best flavors we got the best vegetables we got the fresh produce we've got a mix of spices levels you can have things creamy you can have things snacky you can have things you know Absolutely. fine dough. we like there is not and i'm i don't i really don't think i'm being biased here and i know i'm preaching to the converted with you but there is not a cuisine in the world that can touch south asian cuisine desi cuisine so uh, i fully agree with you tommy here you know uh, i tell you what uh, so uh, you know as a chef so even though i'm very uh, open to experimenting but after the fourth or fifth day i would say where is the oil in my food where is the spice in my food so where is the chatpada thing in my food so i get to hear this i also run back to the kitchen if i were traveling out and through the remotest country in the world i would say okay whatever spices you got you give it to me i would like love to explore with them so you name uh, for example if you were to really look at Uh, lahore as a street food okay so you would probably experiment to the core i mean the taka the kadais to the sabzi mandis and what food they have to offer so they wake up with the thought that what's uh, what's the kebab oh kebab kaun sa aaj breakfast ke liye oh wo wali khane so that's the thing the same thing in punjab like you know in when you're in punjab so it's a common saying that 50% of the punjabis in punjab are eating and 50% are cooking oh or sleeping are they yeah, yeah. or oh, they are cooking it's, yeah. it's a, a pure divide so 50% are cooking 50% are eating then that's mm-hmm. how the thing that one meal gets over the other begins okay the moment you walk out uh, uh, and i have seen the moment you walk out into the street you somehow start feeling hungry uh, i have seen this personally indians love to eat food Uh, a classic example i i remember when meals were free in aircraft you might have finished your breakfast at home at 8 o'clock you would still get into a plane at 9 o'clock and say what's for breakfast yeah okay yeah, yeah. Yes. so so we indians look at food uh, from an, a perspective of uh, you know satisfying our soul we are not bothered that okay a man should eat about 350 grams we say that okay uh 350 grams was for the stomach but what's for the soul it's still not happy <laughs> no. so yeah so no. so her, her, her pause, the, so uh, just a question right now in this yeah. current age of all this healthy food and you know health yeah. consciousness uh 
how do how does this balance come in now right because of course spices and oil is part of all what we eat and what we cook but also you know india is also now the number one country in the cardiovascular diseases and all that stuff right so like how do you see as a chef to to keep that balance of good food good taste and what we call healthy you know healthy eating i think the the first thing uh, you know what happens is as indians become uh, you know richer and wealthier uh, uh, they start uh, forgetting the most important thing uh, to balance it out in life okay you have to still wake up jog you know run exercise do yoga uh, i tell you that's the thing for if you ask me for example i live to eat food so for me if i am not eating good food it's not happening and to eat good food i go jogging in the morning irrespective of whether my sciatica is paining or whatever because i think that if i don't run then i'm not getting good food you know i don't want to eat boiled food sorry i'm not there i am not no. that kind of person so yes there is a change that is happening but the change is nothing which is new honestly i would say if you really look at a composition of an indian home thali okay what our parents gave us uh, to eat every day at home uh it was healthy food it was never uh, something which was uh, bad for health okay you had the lentil you had the spinach greens or you had the greens you had the starch in the form of rice or potatoes okay you had the dessert in the form of jaggery okay you had pickle to improve your palate you know so akbar i, I tell you used to eat pickle because he said that i enhance my value of taste and when i eat pickle okay i munch a lot around in my mouth so that helps in easing out digestion so if you were to really look at indian home style food it was never bad it was always good it was the best in the world because it was a complete meal the thali was like a complete musical instrument if you look at it okay it's, it was like a piano it did not a piano does not need any other equipment to instrument to play around with it same thing is with the indian thali it does not need anything it's a complete complete meal the science of indian food was very much there was law lo is lost now is reviving back okay we always believe that you should have dessert first you must have dessert first okay and that's very important now people are realizing all these things and they are incorporating them in their lives okay why that's that? very Sorry, what, why is that why is that paul what why should you have a dessert dessert first i didn't know this why do you do that uh, dessert dessert first is uh, you know uh, it helps you in building your digestive uh, system it helps you in improving your fire element uh, and that's how food gets digested faster okay so you have your what you have your what kulfi first you have so your what, you what, generally what you okay so these are new age things okay these are okay. new age things earlier you would have jaggery first okay and then sometimes jaggery in the last also with bengal gram puff rice but it's important that you begin with a desert country and deserts uh, are always saviors in for you actually you begin with your desert it's going to help you a lot and that okay. science is what i'm seeing india is now reviving back people are accepting this people uh, you know we, we were all like a whole world understood the word kada in pandemic okay kada is something which is a boiled liquor made out of uh, various uh, spices and that is what our parents always gave us when we had a runny nose when we had cough cold whatever we had in in terms of uh, season changes diseases we always got this rather than anything else and i tell you the entire country had kada when they were down with covid in the uh, in the last two for three those, pandemic for those that don't yeah. know for those that don't know what's in that what's in kada what what is so in that in a kada you boil water okay there are various uh, specific spices that go in so they are all heat generating spices so you have ginger crushed in it black pepper crushed in it or long pepper crushed in it you have cloves in it you have uh, a small cardamom in it okay and then you boil this whole concoction if you want it uh, to drink like a tea yeah uh, you can add little bit of tea leaves in the last after you have strained you add little lemon juice and you have it it is the best medicine for your flu cough cold whatever you have it it's going right. to it's it's uh, the best thing to have uh, if you have cough cold yeah 
and it became the hottest selling product in all pharma, you know chemist and pharmacy in india also absolutely covid because you would never see it and now it's the front thing you know yes, yes. Well, you, well you touched on it there with um you know the food back in the day with your parents and the greens and the total meal and you say it's like a, a complete instrument it's almost like what i think what my mum would serve i'd say is like a complete orchestra because i'd have my alu gobi sabji that kind of thing or a dal Absolutely. and then a little bit and then a little bit of chicken and a little bit of roti a little bit of day a little bit of fruit after something like that so you feel like you're right it was it was everything um but so much of my love for food comes from memory and nostalgia and a time when i go back to simplicity and here, you know and here you are working in the industry you've gone into the game where you're now like you say you're experimenting it's a science you're you're playing around with new flavors new combinations but in your heart of heart is is food not best served like the, with the vada like you said in its kind of simplest form it is isn't that what great great ingredients are two or three things just done simply and well absolutely so the best thing is that I love my jeera alu. Just three ingredients in there: cumin, green chilies, turmeric, and parados. So, if you have the right quality of parados, which is winter potatoes, which are a little sweeter, that's the best thing to have. Yeah. So, yeah. if you have a dal in Haridwar, okay. So, it is uh, moong dal, yellow moong dal, just with desi ghee, cumin, and asafoetida. Nothing else. So the food is the most difficult to cook. The complex food allows you a lot of uh, room to create as much complexity uh, and to bring out the taste. But the simplest food, actually, the ingredient speaks more than anything else. So that's what our mothers and our uh, ancient, uh, you know, grannies knew very well. So they would allow the ingredient to talk more than the, you know, top notes of spices and masala to talk. I will give you a classic example while you were mentioning this, you know. Our grannies knew food so well that they would refrain you from eating so many things uh, which were not in season. So I remember, you know, because I passed more of my, most of my time in, in uh, Bombay, when I go back home uh, sometimes uh, to visit my mother, which is in West Bengal, and where the summers are like really hot. So I was making tea in the evening and it was about 47 degree outside. Okay. And that was 47 degrees centigrade. Okay. So that was the temperature and evening 5.36, I was making tea and I was crushing ginger and putting ginger in water. And my mother who was standing behind me, she said, uh, why are you adding ginger? I said, I add ginger every day in my tea when I make it in Bombay. She said, don't you know what's your outside? And in summers, you're not supposed to tea. I said, why is that? Then I started researching. Then I realized that, okay, in summers, you are actually not supposed to do that. You can either add, you know, any seed, which is fennel sauf to cool it down. Okay. You, but you can't add ginger to it because it brings in the heat element into the tea. So the science was so well known to them that they knew they could not document. They probably did not find the scientific angle, many of them, but they knew that this was wrong. This is not right. This is wrong. This is what you're supposed to have. This is what you're supposed to do. And that science is now reviving. Thanks to a lot of mediums that we are now exploring. So we are like reaching out uh, with a lot of recipes across to the world. And I think it's a good time for people to know that Indian food and the South Asian food, I would say, just not Indian food, mind you, because once upon a time it, when it was done, it was always there. It had, it had a great link uh, between us. Okay. And that's important. That's important for us to know, to revive back the science of food so that the world looks uh, upon Indian food as preliminary medicine rather than, you know, uh, popping up pills. Yeah. Yeah, so, Har Harpal, just one thing, right? I think what you just shared is very interesting, right? Because you obviously came up, you know, as a self-made entrepreneur, experimenting different things, learning really the hard way, right? Now, as Absolutely. you're seeing younger, younger folks who are trying to be what you are, you know, becoming a chef, getting into this business, you know, they are just going into very, I would say, not in a bad way, but very modern and machinated techniques, right? That, you know, it's yeah. one or the other and nothing more. And the things you're sharing about these lessons from grandmothers and everything, right? What, what, what can you tell 
aspiring younger folks now, right? Because they are missing out in actually the real, you know, the learning and juice of what, what it is all about. No, absolutely. I mean, I, I'll tell you, you know, when I started my career young, you know, as a chef, we had ustads from uh, the ancient times who would probably not uh, share the knowledge with you easily. You actually had to win the hearts of these people and you had to actually go through uh, a very hard way of learning great things from them, but still you did not extract uh, the best of food. I'll give you a classic example. When I used to work as a chef in some of the best restaurants, what they do is they pick up a frying pan, they pour oil, they add garlic to it, cumin to it, and then the other things are added and uh, you finish off a dish and you serve it to the guest. Over the years, I've realized that whenever I used to have or whenever I used to cook in that method, which I also learned from these ustad, I always had a bloating fe uh, feeling. I would burp. You know, which is why most people would say, oh, Indian food is too heavy to have in lunch. I'm going in a meeting. I can't have Indian food. Over the years, as I moved to the sattvic way of cooking, okay, which is where people stop using garlic, okay? Garlic is best used in the morning for your blood pressure, not in everything that you cook, mind you. <clears throat> but, it's I, I, but it's amazing. But it's amazing. Garlic is garlic is a game changer. Come on. No, it is. It is definitely. But you need to know to blend it right with the right things. Okay. Right. I'll come back to you when I worked with an Italian chef. I will give you a classic example there also. So okay. when I changed my food by adding ginger mostly to all my marinades and my end cooking, I realized that even though I would be probably using 100 grams of butter for you in a dish, you would not go bloated. You will not feel heavy you will say that wow this is what i wanted this is making me happy and i'm 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 very happy eating this kind of food and i learned when i traveled a lot across in uttar pradesh in haridwar in places like this i realized that this is what it is i also remember when i used to cook food at home and i used to do a lot of garlic my mother would always say that why do you add so much garlic to your food? It's not supposed to be added, you know. The way you're adding garlic, it doesn't work. So I realized this over a period of time, hard way of learning, but yes, I realized it. Like Nikhil was mentioning, the new age uh, is wanting to dress up Indian food in a way where the actual flavors are lost. I, I am a very rustic chef, okay? Uh, I like... Uh, I like the uh, way food is cooked in the most rustic way, in the most authentic way, in the most uh, uh, natural way, the way the recipe is not distorted by saying that, okay, you know, let me make a murg makhni, which is good, but let me add some murg makhni instead of the makhni, let me add some foam on top. And with the foam, you will realize that, wow, uh, the flavors of the foam are uh, so intoxicating that you're, you're feeling the foam, but when you actually put it in the tongue, then you're realizing, oh, where is the taste? Yeah. It's finished. It's it's great to look at. It's it's also good in a way, I would say. It did help a lot of chefs in actually telling the world that, yes, Indian food can be presented in a good way. But now, like I opened a restaurant in Boston and I was very clear with the investors that you will not alter a dish. You will tell the guest that if he wants it less spicy, these are the set of dishes that are less spicy. You please try them. I cannot have a Rogan Josh without the oil floating in top. I'll give you another classic example. I was doing uh, a packaged food product in Mumbai for, for a big firm in UK. And the first thing they said was that, Arpal, I want food that's available in Brick Lane because every damn food pan that is having a chicken curry or mutton curry has good amount of oil floating. Although everybody talks health, but when everybody goes there, they're having finger licking good food. Mm. So, you so see, people, people, so, like, people, like, people like it. So yes. it kind of comes back to what you said. People like the naughtiness. And as long as you balance <clears throat> it out with activity and things like that. I, I want Absolutely. to know about your, your, your Italian chef thing, because I'm thinking all the okay, so, garlic your, and all the yes, so, Italians you know, are big dish. Absolutely. So uh, while while we were talking about my mother guiding me that, okay, this ingredient in summer, this in winter, 
while i was doing a food festival with this italian chef in mumbai okay he was very clear he said arpal like in india you change your ingredients okay pesto is not supposed to be had every time of the year tomatoes is not supposed to be had every time of the year so we were very particular in our rural areas of italy tomatoes best available in winters we use that best available in the spring time is uh, what we get as you know uh, parsley there so that's the best time we have our pesto pastas we don't mix it up at all we are very particular about having these two in a separate season not put together then i realized that the world actually in the remote locations still believes changing food habits with the season and not doing it like in india now if you are not having okay sesame uh, and jaggery laddus what we call till gur laddus okay now if you are not having it now you are not building up enough calcium for the year and you are not building up enough mucus system to survive the entire year so having sesame now is the right time it protects you from the change of season it gives you enough calcium one teaspoon of sesame gives you equivalent calcium of six glasses of milk or more oh wow 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 okay so so now's a good time for sesame <coughs> right, right now, now that is why in right. sankrant what we say lodi what we say in punjabi that is the best time to have it is the change of season it keeps your body adjusted it helps you uh, keep uh, the right mucus levels in your body gives you enough <laughs> calcium for the year so how, how yes. did they know this <laughs> How did they know this back in the day? We we are simple folk. We're farmer folk, or you know, even back in India, people. Where, no, where's this knowledge? Actually, science come from? So this this knowledge is available in two three books of Ayurveda. Shushrut uh, uh, Samiti is one book which I follow closely. Okay, I also interact with lot of doctors. Okay, I only try to put uh, to practice the science of Ayurveda because if I really put to practice the entire Ayurveda in cooking. probably that will also allow me to only boil vegetables and cook in minimalistic <laughs> oil and very less spices so i only apply those principles that okay you not supposed to have fruits certain fruits with ice cream you know so the best you know best thing is uh, uh, the combination of fruit with a dairy product there's only two three fruits that work very well with dairy product now the damage is done are not immediate which is why why it is not visible and which is why the world does not accept also so mango is the best fruit for a dairy okay pineapple is the worst papaya is the worst but people still have mango ice uh, papaya ice cream pineapple ice cream watermelon worst people still have watermelon ice cream you cannot have this if you have it daily i am telling you you are going to have trouble when you are at the age of 50 and you start this process and the damage is serious it is not recoverable okay you cannot recover that's great yeah so you know th- these are very very powerful uh, arpal but very uh, i would say you can call it simple but powerful but nobody even thinks about these things right people are just Absolutely. consuming things like <laughs> like machines and all that stuff so i know you 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 have multiple forums including your own show and everything but but is that like your next version of your i would say you know giving back to you know this whole community right because obviously you're giving great food and everything but is that something you think you want to embark on because the knowledge as you're talking about those stars you know which also happens in music right i mean you are now yourself an ustad in all this knowledge yeah. right i mean how are you thinking about giving it you know to, to so that it keeps 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 living with the younger generation absolutely absolutely so it's very important to know that you know my way of teaching now back through our digital uh, mediums and through my television shows is that what i give what i give back to the society is the fine points uh, that i have learned in cooking okay so uh, if uh, sesame uh, if, if nigella seeds nigella seeds you know uh, the onion seeds that we call have become such a powerful tool uh, across the world you you using it for therapeutic values you know people across the world are saying that one teaspoon of uh, black onion seed oil in a cup of black tea is like actually the best cleanser for you but we have been consuming black onion uh, seed for ages if you really see uh, a samosa skin if it does not have a black onion seed it is going to harm you it's going to 
harm you. So the right ingredient has to be there to protect you. If brinjals that you cook, bharta, if it does not have black onion seeds, it's going to harm you because the seeds are not digestible. Okay. So these are very simple things that we need to learn. And these, these are uh, like things that I have learned the very hard way. And I want to give it back in the most easiest way. Because I know that even if I tell somebody, hello, don't mix watermelon with milk because it is the most dangerous thing you are having. Please don't do that. They will like rub me off thing, saying that he's a mad guy, you know, he doesn't know anything. But the damages start happening, okay? For example, I'll tell you, the classiest example I tell you is that I, I tell everybody that you should not consume oats with milk. Oh, do not what? Get, the yes. 90% of the planet have yes milk. exactly oh, and yeah. I've been shouting i've been shouting on top of my voice that you should not and and today when you go back home you if you browse through you will see that the best medium of extracting the best nutritional value from oats is citric okay so oats have to be soaked either in lemon water overnight or they have to be soaked in orange juice first mixed with yogurt do not top it with honey if it is yogurt yogurt we all do it. Oh no, we've been getting it so <laughs> long, so many years. Right. Yeah, have have the have the shakes, you know, protein shakes, and all are always mixed with oats and milk, and that's like you know, like you cannot. I mean, uh, if if I go and have an ice cream, I prefer uh, having a lemon chilo. Or, you know, I I prefer that. I do not prefer with dairy at all. You know, I I I think uh, no, that's a stick no for me. Yeah. Yeah. So that's the way it is. So these are fine points which people should know. People should understand very well. It does not harm you immediately, but it brings, you know, most of the time people are not able to relate. You know, they just come up with a version that, oh, there's something wrong, something wrong that I've eaten. So what could be the reason? You are probably mm -hmm. having a digestion upset because mm -hmm. of two ingredients that you have mixed. Mm -hmm. You probably had a food when you were absolutely at a high acidic medium, which means the time that you have spent of not having meals is too high and you put in too much gastric juices. So you need to understand that. And that's when, when you put too many gastric juices, that's when the desert actually works for you. Okay. That's the best yes. thing to do. So that's okay. the where the desert cools it down. And then All it right. says that, okay, let the next thing come in. There's so much to this. I mean, like I said, and clearly, obviously, this is your field. This is your speciality. You love food. You love cooking. You love feeding people. I can see the joy it brings. But now with, you know, everything that you're doing with Turban Tarka Hospitality, Turban Tarka, you know, the 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 restaurant, the cooking show and everything. Yeah. Else, that's, that's a different game because now you're yeah. a businessman with this passion. Your passion has turned busy Correct. and it's big time. I've seen all your videos. I've seen a load of them across, even across YouTube, hundreds of thousands of views on each one, you know, and that, look, the studio that you're sat in, this is your office kitchen studio. You know, like you, you, you're doing things on another level now. How hard is it? How hard is it being a passionate chef who just wants to cook and turning that into this business side of what you have to do and being across accounts and staff and all the nuts and bolts that go with running your own business how hard has that been it's very hard in plain and simple word a passionate person cannot become a good businessman so i'm not a good businessman okay which is why i realized after losing a lot of money by creating a lot of verticals for myself i realized that no uh, i'm a passionate person so first i have to throw the passion out if you if i were actually to become an entrepreneur so i need to realize what the customer what what is the need what is the need of the r okay can i fit in there can i bring the right ingredient with the usp to build that i need a good financial background or a good financial support system so once all this combines together very well then it turns into a good business sense which i have realized uh, after about 10 years of becoming an entrepreneur, because initially, you know, every chef has a passion. Like, I mean, if you go and tell Gordon Ramsay, for example, you know, hey, yes, it's bullshit. You know, he says, I know cooking better than you. Uh, but uh, then it, it's, it's the customer's opinion. You better listen out. If you don't listen out, 
you will get bankrupt which is what happened with his restaurants yeah so you yeah. need to listen to the customer hey mcdonald your burger is the most shittiest burger but hello i have 12000 restaurants yes you have 12000 restaurants <laughs> where is the meat pack where is the patty inside he said yeah there is a small one take a microscope and look at it so at 1 dollar that is what you will get and we know how to sell that yeah. so we will say that oh there's nothing inside i will not sell it and you learn you got to learn that very well so many things are things that you start learning as an entrepreneur over a period of time and uh, uh, that is what has happened with us also we would like slowly settling down with what we have to offer uh, to the world as a usp of course that's the most important thing and it's the most difficult thing and the classiest example our country has is look at amitabh bachchan okay amitabh bachchan number one uh, in terms of everything he created his own company okay he realized that he is a passionate person he failed drastically okay he realized that i should work on my passion i should hire people to run my business and this passion should become the business and that is the stage we are in okay Nikhil? yeah and I th- I, I, yeah i think it it is very uh, very very powerful learning right because a lot of brands right whether you're bollywood or music or sports star right uh, they certainly start expanding all over the place meaning like okay because i am a name now i can do clothing i can do fitness i can do fashion i can do restaurants i can do hotels right and it's fine Absolutely. to expand your brand but it's each you know it's it's each, uh, own expertise and that's where they're not let go i think you'd have to yes. learn to let go of what you don't know and stick to what you know right which which is absolutely, basically your yeah. brand right yeah absolutely i mean if you if 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 i were to look at myself i would probably if i were to go go into clothing i would say okay who's the expert in this use my name and if it is working for you you are the person who's going to handle it i will not meddle because i don't know anything you know for me to learn textile is going to take hell lot of time so might as well not go in there but if still somebody is passionate saying that no i want to use your name then i don't meddle i say okay you give me a minimum stake equity you want to use the name use the name uh, and and see how it you know rubs across i got an idea i got an idea just before we wrap up here for the yes. harpal singh clothing range right what i think you should do you should have like a lovely white shirt or suits or ties or whatever it is but just a little yellow haldi stain just a little haldi stain design a haldi stain cuz haldi stain hs same like your logo your, your initials hs right so i'm like it could be hs the clothing and then the haldi stain on the clothes what do you think should we set up the website nikhil should we set up the it's website a, it's a... <laughs> It's a brilliant thing. I, I, I think I think it's a brilliant sale. Now, yeah. now, now here's a here's a classic example. Now, Tommy trying to yeah. become a designer here, right? So, okay, <laughs> sorry. Yeah, no, no, I should, I should, but, I should but, employ but Harpal, people. <laughs> but Harpal, but your, your your turban is very creative, I must say. So yeah. I think it, definitely there is a there is a there is a look there. There's a look of creativity. Yes, yes. No, yes. L- listen, Har- Harpal, it's been absolutely great talking to you. I, lo- yeah. I love your passion. I love the wisdom. I love. Um, I love the way things are going. I love the way you relate food to kind of our well-being and the future and the fusion of it all. Look, and you know, being a British desi, you know, I know that I have a love for food that goes back to my roots, to my history, and and I'm so proud of it. And and just seeing you doing think the things that you make, know that your YouTube videos, that studio that you're using, it trickles through to little old me in East London here, who's going to yeah. now do. Harpal's buna chicken, Harpal's chole, you know, and I'm going to now think about my timing when I eat my tomato and my my ginger and my garlic and when I'm putting it to what. So so it's already been so beneficial. So and no oats with milk. And yeah, no and milk. Oh my god, no oats with milk. That's, that's changed everything. Uh, but okay, but thank you so much and, and wish you all the best with all, all your projects and your ventures. Thank you. Thank, you. thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I heard genuinely this is just as a fact. I heard that if you hit subscribe to this podcast now if you have subscribed on apple or on spotify or on geosarvan or wherever you are listening right now if you are subscribing and getting that on a regular which means you get the little notification when the new episode comes out fact this is a fact don't tell no one else's if you hit subscribe you can eat as many jalebis as you want and you will never put on weight i don't i know i don't understand the logic 
It makes no sense to me. I mean, how's a podcast relate to the DNA way in which your body breaks down Jalebi sugar stuff running through your cell? I don't understand, but what I do know, it's a little cheat to life. So if you like Jalebis, then you should hit subscribe to this podcast. Oh, and follow us on social media too. We're on Instagram, Facebook, and Twitter. Follow us, eat Jalebis, be happy.